Back to basics, I want to show you in this video how Fusion automatically determines the default frame size and how Fusion keeps track of the area where computation happens throughout your flow, domain of definition. This is a very basic concept and it happens automatically most of the times but it can cause a lot of confusion if you are not aware and can cause some problems in some specific circumstances. So that's why I want to cover it in this video. This is taken from my compositing course where I have a full chapter on image fundamentals. I discuss everything from color spaces, linear workflow, alpha pre-multiplication, up to things like file sizes, file types for compositing. So the, all the basic things that often fall under the table but that can become really important. Uh, feel free to check out the course on my website later but first enjoy this video. Let's start out simple and look at a simple image here. I am in DaVinci Resolve and have loaded this from the timeline. And the first thing you see is on top of the image you see the frame size, right? 1920 by 1280. Also, whenever you're anywhere in the flow, you can select a tool, hover over it, wait a little bit, and then you see this box where you can also see the current frame size uh, within the flow. Now, this is determined by the media I have loaded. So I have a source image which has this specific resolution. It is not related to the timeline resolution. If I go to the timeline in DaVinci Resolve, you see here I have a 1080 project, um, so full HD project, and my image actually has some black boundaries here because uh, it was uh, squeezed a bit in the timeline when loading it into the timeline. But in Fusion, I get my final um, media resolution independent of the timeline resolution. This is important to know. Um, now, if you do want to see the final way, the way it's displayed in the timeline, uh, in that case, I would recommend just put a, a crop uh, at the end, crop or resize, uh, and do the kind of transformations so that your final media out actually displays the resolution you want to see in the timeline, if you want to be sure to see exactly what is reflected there. So if I just add a crop here, um, I can crop to 1920 by 1080 if I just enter it here. And this way now, it should be before the media out, of course. And this way I have now cropped it to the, the final timeline resolution. Or of course, I can scale or do anything else. Um, okay, so media in nodes uh, are determined by the source media. Uh, what about stuff that you create? For example, if I select a background node here. Um, Let's bring it into the viewer and you see this now also has 1920 by 1280. And this is a bit DaVinci Resolve specific. When you are creating a fusion clip from DaVinci Resolve, then the default frame size settings are being determined and they are being determined by the first uh, media in from which you are creating this clip. So because I started out here with a photograph of 1920 by 1280, uh, Fusion believes that everything else I want to create should also be in this resolution. And my background node now is also in 1920 by 1280. If you are in Fusion Studio, things are different. There, of course, you don't have a timeline. When you load any media, it will again be determined based on the media resolution. But if you create background nodes and things like this, it will actually be determined by the project resolution. So you have in the uh, project settings or in the preferences, you have the frame format setting, and there you have the width and height of your project, and every background node, render node, and so on will automatically take the settings from there. So that's a bit of a difference between uh, Fusion Studio and Resolve. The rest will be the same whether you are in DaVinci Resolve or in Fusion Studio. Now, there are different objects which determine its resolution, right? So the media in has it, the background node, I might actually override. So if I want, I have here these image settings and I can disable the auto resolution and then enter, for example, 1080 if this is what I want to be working in. One peculiar thing are masks. If I attach a mask, it will be automatically uh, set to the frame settings of the object that it's attached to. So if I attach a mask to this media in, just let's attach an ellipse, and I look into this ellipse, it has 1920 by 1280. If I attach an ellipse to the background node here on the right viewer, 
you see it's 1920 by 1080. And the reason is I just changed the background size. So the mask automatically adjusts to the size of the node that I'm connecting it to. Typically, this works very well. Um, there are sometimes a few cases where the update is not working or where you get some inconsistencies. Um, perhaps maybe if I change, for example, if I connect this mask now to here, um, it wasn't updated immediately, so it still shows 1920 by 1280, although I think it's still applied correctly. Um, it's applied the same way as this mask. So you see no difference, uh, but it still shows the old frame setting, which is maybe a little bit uh, confusing. Um, but if you want to, or if you need to for any reason, uh, if you need to determine the frame setting, you can again go into this image settings. And here you can from default switch to custom, and then you can uh, change your height and width and so on. Uh, the same way I could in the background node, for example. OK, so this is how a Fusion determines resolution for the different uh, generator nodes and masks and so on. Um, the maximum resolution, by the way, is for practical purposes almost infinite. Uh, in fact, it's 16K by 16K in DaVinci Resolve and 32K by 32K in Fusion Studio. Um, this 32K limit I actually reached only once when I uh, tried to composite some super high resolution NASA Earth images. And I wasn't careful about how to put them. And I just thought maybe I can just throw them on the super large frame. Um, and of course, I, I didn't uh, need that resolution at the end. So there was a way around it. But typically, you never reach the resolution limit, uh, neither in Resolve nor in um, Fusion Studio. OK, let me remove all this. And let's have a look at how calculations are actually being performed. And let me do a simple transform here just to demonstrate. So I have my media in and my media out in the right viewer. And now in between, I'll just transform this image out. OK, so far nothing surprising. The transform brings it out of the frame. Now let me bring in a second transform. And you probably already know that I can bring the image back. Now, how is that possible? So that means that between this transform here, where the image was brought out, and this transform where it's brought back, actually pixels which were outside of the frame are being considered. Now, that doesn't really mean that Fusion needs to calculate uh, outside because um, technically, some of these tools may be calculated together internally by the software. So it's possible that if you transform out and then transform back, um, then actually Fusion recognizes this and combines these two transforms and only gives me the final result. So internally, just because the image is outside doesn't always mean that the frame um, or the number of pixels that uh, Fusion needs to calculate is also increasing. So it's not working like this. However, there is a domain that is being considered for the calculation that uh, Fusion is keeping track of, and that is called domain of definition. Let's have a look at this. Let me bring the media in again on the left viewer and enable it via right click, region, show domain of definition. Now I see this uh, line on the side and these coordinates here, which are on top sometimes hidden. So at the moment, if I just have my media in, my domain of definition is just the full frame size. If I go into the transform now, Fusion has kept track of it and knows that nothing is happening here, but my whole image is being transformed over here and my domain of definition was adjusted. So this is now the area where uh, which is relevant for calculation and at the end for display. So it's keeping automatically track of this. If I go back to the second transform, you see it's being uh, the domain of definition is moving back. Now, typically all of this goes through without even noticing in the background. However, there are cases where this kind of flow is being broken. And one simple example is a blur, for example. So if I add a blur here, you see what's happening now. Suddenly, my image is not coming back from my transform. So I have my original image, I have my transformed image, now I have my blurred image, and I transform back and it's not coming back. 
And the reason is that my blur here has a clipping mode and it is by default clipping to the frame size. Um, blur actually does perform calculations on each pixel and Blur decides that it shouldn't just calculate everything by default, uh, which could lead to more uh, computational requirements. So it typically says I Blur only on the visible frame unless you tell me otherwise. And you can tell Blur otherwise. So if you want, you can go here instead of frame, you can choose domain or none. And in each case, Blur considers a different region to do the actual calculation. So let's bring the Blur up so that we actually can easily see it. So right now I have my Blur on the frame and that means here where the Blur is being calculated, it's calculating over the frame. You see now the domain of definition actually was uh, chopped off on this side compared to this transform. So previously domain of definition was here. Now Blur is clipping it off here and extending it here. It's extending it here because of the blur radius. So my blur now goes some 50 pixels or whatever and is extending the domain of definition because it needs the space to blur. Um, if I now switch from frame to domain, something different happens. Now the blur is blurring on this domain even outside the clipped off area and this way I can bring my blurred image back with the next transform here. So my second transform here works, my domain of definition was extended. If I choose instead of domain, I choose none. That means I am blurring everywhere where there are pixels or where there are where there is frame. So in this case, my whole image is blurred with the complete previous domain of definition. And in addition, this domain is being extended in all directions that the blur requires. So if I check from the transform to the blur, you see my domain of definition is extended by the blur radius everywhere independent of the previous domain of definition. So uh, this clipping mode you find in a few different tools. So blur is the most obvious one. A few other color tools um, are there as well. Um, and this is how uh, it is actually being used. If you want, you could manually intervene. So there's an option to set the domain of definition. So you can um, put here set DOD, set domain of definition. And if you add this tool into the flow, you can manually set it. So right now it is, uh, there's a mode which says adjust or set. If it's adjust, it means it takes the domain of definition from before and then you can extend it manually or shrink it. Um, or you can put it to set and then you can set the actual domain of definition manually uh, on, on which the calculation could be performed. Of course, the tools afterwards can um, again uh, perform changes to this, right? So this is only at this point in the flow. Uh, it's not very common uh, that I use this tool, but um, I guess it's good to know that it's there. So sometimes you could, I mean, typically you might rather use tools like crop or so if you want to remove stuff from outside and you want to decide on the frame size as well. But in principle, you can uh, discard information outside of the frame um, with set domain, uh, without uh, any other tools, without any crop or so. One more interesting thing about domain of definition, whenever you load files into Fusion, the domain of definition by default is set to the frame size, right? Like we had just here with the media in and the same with the loader node in Fusion Studio. However, there is um, one file type, the EXR files, which can keep track of the domain of definition inside the file. Um, and this happens when I use the loader node, both in Fusion Studio and DaVinci Resolve. If I have a file which was rendered with a smaller domain of definition, and I have here a test file where I just rendered out a text node, nothing else. And if I load this, you see my text node, so this is just a text plus which I rendered as an EXR file uh, via the saver node. And if I load this, you see here test for domain of definition and my domain of definition is actually being tracked inside the EXR file and directly being loaded again. However, if I bring in the EXR from the media library or just drag and drop and get my media in node, uh, then the domain of definition is again the full frame size. So only via loader and saver is this uh, feature being uh, 
implemented in Resolve and preserved. And this is a specific thing for EXR files, which are very common in compositing and uh, CG applications. And they have these kind of extra functionality and tr keeping track of the domain of definition as one of them. Okay, so this is the way how Fusion keeps track of the relevant region for computation throughout the flow. And this can change from node to node. Um, there is also the concept of region of interest. And this is a way how you can decide which uh, area you want to have updated in the viewer. Um, this is slightly different. This is only for preview purposes. It can be helpful if you're working on very large compositions, um, but are only performing updates relevant to one minor area. Let's say you have your 4K or whatever image, and in one area you are doing some, some keying or color correction and you only want to focus on this and you have lots of other stuff going on in your composition, then you can focus in on a certain area of the frame via region of interest. There is this button here on top. Let me uh, first disable a little bit here um, to have a few less lines. And here I can enable region of interest and by default it's the full frame. Let me disable this viewer so we have only one viewer which is easier to keep track of um, because if you have two viewers you have to think about both of the viewers. Um, now let me reduce the region of interest and let's say I'm only interested in this part. This means now that when I do any changes Fusion will consider all changes relevant to this area for updating this viewer image. Now depending on your previous transforms and so on it's possible that you see updates outside as well. Also if you have previously cached nodes which are still active um, in the flow it's possible you see those uh, as well. So sometimes you do see updates outside but any new computations that Fusion is doing from now on it will only consider for this uh, those computations that affect this area. Um, let's see if this works here. So if I now move this a bit back. Yeah, you see I moved the transform back. It's updating in here and it actually cleared the rest right now. So there's no, uh, no calculations being performed for the rest of the frame, but only for this region of interest. Okay, so when you're working on, on very slow and large stuff um, and, and have one area where you want to refine a bit, you can manually set this and the actual computation will now be determined by a combination of the um, domain of definition and the region of interest, so by the, the intersection of the two. And of course Fusion does keep track of it uh, downstream. So uh, my, if I do my transforms before and then look at my region of interest at the end, uh, it does keep track that you know I'm I'm moving out of the frame, I'm moving back. So same like always. Basically, you could just imagine you have a crop at the end towards a smaller viewer window, uh, and and this is uh, what you are actually uh, computing. What Fusion is actually computing, just with the added convenience that you can do it on every tool anywhere just by clicking this button. All right, I think that's pretty much it. Frame size, domain of definition, region of interest. Now you have full control over it. Thank you for watching this lesson from my compositing training course. This course builds strong foundations in the art and craft of compositing with Fusion. It covers topics from rotoscoping, keying, integration, 3D camera tracking, all the way up to topics like projection and multipass compositing. And it goes into a level of depth that very few online courses reach. If you're interested, check out the course page for further details, have a look what other students are saying about this course and I'd be very happy to welcome you inside.